Thank you for being back. And I know it's a very long and hectic day. We've got several symposiums. We're starting off by uh, the BMS symposium. My name is Mohsen Mukhtar. I'm professor of clinical oncology, Cairo University. And uh, today the topic is on second line immunotherapy, still a major player in non-small cell lung cancer. If you were with us uh, earlier on talking about immunotherapy, we c you can see that we still have a long way to go before we cure all patients. And second line still remains a valuable option for uh, a lot of our patients. I know we've been doing it with chemotherapy. We've used second line therapies in a lot of our patients were in non-small cell lung cancer as well as in many other cancers. These are my disclosures, and as you know, this is a BMS-sponsored uh, symposium. If we look at where the guidelines are today, and with immunotherapy, we do, um, unfortunately or fortunately for the patients, get a rapid change of the guidelines. But if we look at the guidelines today, they will tell us that patients with pdl one positive, more than 50%, should receive immunotherapy, and in this case, the approval was for pembrolizumab. But if we look at the data coming out of the trial that got this approval, the Keynote 024, they started off with around 2,000 patients. And the samples that were taken and were sent for the assessment were only around 1,700. So they lost around 300 patients. Then, if you look at the patients that were pdl one positive, more than 50%, that's 500 patients, so only a quarter of the patients. And the patients that were actually treated, so either they were not fit or they had shifted onto another form of therapy before the results came, were only around 300 patients. So in essence, you're not going to be able to treat all your patients, even if they have pdl one positive more than 50%, with immunotherapy as part of the first line. And if we look at where we are, this is data that came out of France, analyzing the patients before the use of immunotherapy in second line uh, setting. You can see that patients that had oncogenic driven mutations did actually much better than patients that did not have an uh, oncogenic mutation. And please remember the number here, the alt alt gene alteration absent patients only had an overall survival of around 12 months. So the one year mark is that thing that we have to beat. So that's why second line is still going to play a major role for our patients. And this is especially so in somewhere like our country where giving first line immunotherapy at such high cost may not be affordable for most of the patients. And that's why even if you do have a patient that is PDL1 positive more than 50%, though the guidelines will tell you to give them immunotherapy in the first line, still a majority of your patients will not receive first line immunotherapy. We've had this data that has been here. This, I know, is a phase one trial. But if you look at this phase one trial, the first of the studies of the nivolumab on an advanced uh, solid tumors, non-small cell lung cancer cohort, there was 129 patients. And I've put this because this is the longest trial or the longest data that we have. We've got five-year updates on this, on this data. Analysis is, as you can see in the bottom here, more than 56 months uh, or 58.25 months. And they were giving nivolumab testing out one milligram, three milligram, and 10 milligram. And as you know now, the standard fixed dose is 250 milligrams every two weeks for your patient. If you look at the overall survival, and I know Professor Neil presented this data before, you can see that at five years, you still had 16% overall survival pay for these patients. And as Professor Neil said, the majority of these patients don't even have progression uh, of their tumor. So when you do get that durable response, you can see at two years, you got 24%. One year, you got 42% of your patients still going on for survival. And remember, this is second line. This is not considering what they had in terms of overall survival from the start of the disease, which we had to beat was, as I said, 12 months. Looking at the median overall survival, around 10 months. If you look at it by different histologies, squamous versus non-squamous histology, you can see that there was no difference. And actually, both of these patients, or both of these subset of patients and different histologies do benefit from uh, the use of nivolumab in this setting. If you look at PDL1 status, 
as always, in all of the PDL, uh, PDL1 or the checkpoint inhibitors, all of the patients that do have a higher PDL1 will definitely benefit more. But that doesn't mean that the patients that are PDL1 negative will not benefit. You can see that the overall survival for patients who are less than 1% is 20% per, uh, at five years. The patients who are more than 1% is 23, so the difference of 3%. And if you've got or lucky to have a patient that has PDL1 positive more than 50%, their, their overall survival is up to five year overall survival is up to 43%. And this is really striking, and as Professor Neil said before, now we can tell our patients that probably some of you may be, or we can, uh, are able to uh, cure some of these patients. So that the estimated five-year overall survival from this trial was 16%. Remember, these are pre-treated, heavily pre-treated patients with different doses of nivolumab used in this setting. But as I said, this is the only trial that we do have data for a five-year follow-up. And you can see that the squamous and non-squamous histology both PDL1 uh, less than 1% and more than 1%, and up to four lines of systemic therapy, all of these patients and all subset uh, analysis, all of them did have some uh, benefit from the use of nivolumab uh, as a single agent. If we go to the real phase three clinical data, what do we have in terms of second line? The first to come out was Again, the checkmate 017 and 057 in different populations, both squamous and non-squamous uh, non histology. Then we had the Keynote 010 and the Oak trial. But they do have some differences in them, in that one of the trials, as you can see here, the Keynote, which had uh, over 1,000 patients, did have to have PDL1 positivity. And as you all know, it is required for, uh, for the use of this drug to have this, uh, the test of, of PDL1 positivity in these patients, in, even in terms of second line. But the checkmates and the OAK trials did not require the testing of PDL1 for the patients. If we look at what we have from the Keynote uh, 010, this was Pembro versus Docetaxel in the previously treated PDL1 positive patients, and they, the uh, ECHOC performance status is 0 to 1. They had over 1,000 patients, as I said, using two different doses of Pembro, 2 and 10 milligrams versus uh, Docetaxel. They did have, in the last analysis, you can see an overall response rate definitely better for the Pembro, especially in the 10 milligram. Ongoing responses are the same. Median duration of response was not reached, and uh, you can see that the overall response rate, 19, 20 versus 10 for docetaxel, so definitely more than doubling that of the docetaxel. Ongoing response and duration of response, you can see that it's around 21 months uh, in terms of duration of response. If you look at the overall survival, again, you got a benefit of around five months for the Pembro 10 milligrams, while you got around less than two months for the Pembro 2 milligrams per kg, and you can see that both of them actually were both statistically significant in favor of the Pembrolizumab. The second trial that I'm going to show you is the OAK, and this was again a phase three trial, the same subset of patients, locally advanced metastatic, 1,225 patients were enrolled at TISO versus docetaxel, but they were allowed one to two prior lines of chemotherapy, and all the PDL1 status was allowed. So it wasn't necessary to test for PDL1 or wasn't necessary to be PDL1 positive in this, uh, in this group of patients. They were looking at, again at the primary endpoint of an overall survival. And if you look at the primary endpoint for the, all the intention to treat population, you can see with a minimum follow up of around more than one and a half years, um, you had 55% for the atezolizumab at the 12 month mark, and at 18 months it was around 40%. Median overall survival, 13.8. So definitely beating that of the, uh, coming, the data coming out of France prior to uh, the use of immunotherapy for the patients. Now in the Oak trial, they had a different sort of testing where they were testing both the um, uh, tumor as well as the immune cells for the PDL1 status. You can see that here with a score of 3 plus 3 or uh, IC, uh, TC3, IC3 score, you got the highest uh, benefit in terms of hazard ratio 0.41. If the patients were negative, it went down to 0.75, so a benefit of around 25% compared to a benefit of around 59% if you had uh, a high score for the patients. If we come to the checkmates, uh, both the 17 and 57, same trial designs, but with different population in one being squamous and one being non-squamous population. And if you look at uh, this, they were allowed 
3 mg per kg every two weeks, and then with the option to switch to a flat dose of uh, Nevo 480 mg every four weeks. This was allowed after September uh, 2016. If you look at the overall response rate, Nevo versus docetaxel, more than doubling, 20 versus 9, 19 versus 12 in the non squamous. If you look at the duration of the response, you can see that the duration of response was upped around four times from 8.4 to 25.2 and from 5.6 to 18.3, so nearly or more than tripling the response, the whole duration of response for the use of nivolumab in these patients. Looking at the progression free survival, you do get a nice parting out of the curves as early on as uh, four to six months. So this is really important because a lot of us when we're using immunotherapy, we tend to look at immunotherapy in that you might not get a quick response, but actually nowadays the data says that you are going to probably get quick responses as early as eight weeks, which is probably the same as that for chemotherapy, even when you do have a patient that is, um, has some sort of uh, metastatic uh, problems that need urgent taking care of. So you can see here from both these trials, from the Checkmate 17 and 57, progression-free survival at three years was 12%. And uh, in the Checkmate 57, it was 10%. Remember, this is progression-free survival. If we look at what these patients received as some sort of subsequent therapy, so looking at where to put our therapies, where to put our immunotherapy, you can see that a lot of the patients that were on the docetaxel did receive some sort of immunotherapy later on in sec uh, as a sort of a third line. Some of the patients received a vascular endothelial growth factor inhibitor, and some of the patients also received an ALK and EGFR inhibitor. If we look at the overall survival for the patients, you got an up from 6% to 16%. But remember this 6% that we had never seen with non uh, uh, or with squamous cell carcinoma of, uh, in our patients is because these, a lot of these patients did shift on to some sort of immunotherapy. Again, from the Checkmate 057, you can see that uh, hazard ratio of 0.73 upping the three-year overall survival from eight, nine to 18 percent. So double the overall survival in terms of uh, the use of nivolumab in both these uh, patients. If we look at the PDL1 status, do we need PDL1 status? We don't really need the PDL1 status, but I know that when you do have a patient that is PDL1 positive, even if it's more than 1%, and especially if they're more than 50%, you're going to tend to get a better overall survival, as well as a progression free survival, as well as an overall response. And this is just to show that it is always, even the PDL1 negative patients, you do get a better uh, off point than the docetaxel uh, or the chemotherapy arm with the use of nivolumab in these patients. So after after a minimum of three years follow-up from the Checkmate 017 and 057, 5 and 7 percent of the nivolumab treated patients still remain on the study. And as Professor Neil was showing us, one of the patients after 100 uh, cycles of nivolumab still doing quite well and still remain on, remained on the study. No docetaxel treated patients remained on the study because even those who did progress were shifted on to some sort of second, third line therapy, including that of immunotherapy. The three-year overall survival was 16 versus 6. The Checkmate 017, 18 versus 9. And you can, uh, in the Checkmate 057, uh, with Nevo and Docetaxel uh, respectively. Progression-free survival, 12 versus non-calculatable in the 017, uh, and 10 versus less than 1% in the Checkmate 057. Among the responders, patients had longer median durations of response with the Nevo versus the docetaxel. So even in the patients that do respond to chemotherapy, you still the patients that were on the immunotherapy, in this case nivolumab, did much better than the patients who did respond on the docetaxel. I think the most important of the trials that came out in the past year is the Checkmate 153 because a lot of us were skeptical about using immunotherapy for our patients that did respond to immunotherapy to continue the use of immunotherapy, especially beyond one year. And I don't know where we got the one year from, but I think it was some sort of thinking of um, the way we do with maintenance therapy, continue for one year. I think immunotherapy is a bit different from that, and as Professor Neil said, he, did, he was uh, quite surprised by the results from this trial. 
And these were patients that did benefit or had some sort of uh, benefit from the use of nivolumab. They were put on this trial. You can see that here, after one year of treatment, they were either randomized to continuous nivolumab or stop nivolumab and were allowed nivolumab retreatment at progressive disease. And this is really important because these patients weren't shifted onto another drug. They were given the same drug that they were given before, and in this case it was nivolumab. You can see that the lock-off was at uh, May 15, 2017. You can see that the patient flow, 1,245. If you look at the patients that were on treatment at one year, you can see there were 220. So around one-sixth of the patients did continue on the treatment at one year. Continuous nivolumab was given in 76 patients. Stopping nivolumab and rechallenging at, uh, was at 87% uh, of the patients. If we look at here, 87% of the patients or from the 112 had some sort of response or stable disease at the time of randomization. 43 or 49% had progressive disease after stopping nivolumab and 79% were retreated with nivolumab. So from the 110, the patients that had some sort of rechallenge with nivolumab were 34 patients. And if we look at the progression-free survival from randomization, you can see that here it is not reached at six months, 80 versus, uh, uh, then 80 versus uh, 65, or 69 versus 40. But I think what's really important is that you can see the curves really parting out from the first month that you stop. And if you look here, here, this is less than three months, so the patients do progress actually quite rapidly. And remember that these patients were patients who had PR, stable disease, or even uh, CR uh, on their scans. Progressive disease from the response status, CR and PR, or stable disease, you can see that the patients, even the patients, and most importantly, it's when we look at these CT scans of our patients that do have CR or PR, and then we decide to stop because we don't, or we cannot see the disease for the patients. If you do stop the immunotherapy, you can see again in this first curve here on the left, sorry, you can see that there is a difference starting off in less than three months. Look at the number of patients here. At three months, you got 85% continuing, and here it went down to less than 80%. So you do get a difference of patients very early on when you do stop the therapy. The stable disease patients, I think it's uh, sort of the same, but it starts off at around three months. But if you look at the hazard ratio in terms of progression-free survival, 55% benefit in patients who had CR or PR, and more than 56% oh, benefit in patients that had stable disease. If we look at the progression-free survival by subgroup analysis in all the patients, whatever they age, less than 70, more than 70, male, female, uh, smokers, yes or no, squamous histology, non-squamous, second, third line, and fourth line therapy, regardless of the PDL1 status, they always favored the continuation of nivolumab in this setting. And if you look at the initiation and duration of the retreatment, unfortunately, the retreatment of your patient will probably be short because you can see here that most of the patients did receive only around two months of rechallenge or retreatment with the nivolumab. You can see that the median time between the progression and retreatment was 0.6 months, so around three weeks for the rechallenge. The median duration of retreatment was only around 3.8 months, so as you can see here, it's definitely, looking at this trial, it is definitely better to continue therapy with nivolumab, even when your patient has CR, PR, or stable disease. If we look at the target re, uh, uh, lesions that are being retreated with our, in these patients, you can see that unfortunately the targets, most of them did have uh, up or uh, uh, be, uh, did not have benefit. The target lesions responding were only around 35%. Looking at the summary of safety, because the real concern, not just the financial toxicity, it will also be the toxicity for the patient in terms of safety and adverse events. If you look at the continuous therapy versus the one-year treatment, there were no new adverse events that were really recorded. You can see that there is a slight increase in the grade three, four toxicities, but I think nowadays we're starting to learn how to manage the toxicities much better than we used to a couple of years ago, especially uh, in the beginning when we started using immunotherapy. And I think we'll all agree they are as reasonable to, uh, to treat 
as chemotherapy or even less than that of chemotherapy. The most important is obviously the overall survival. And if you look at the hazard ratio for the overall survival, again, parting out of the curves at or less than three months, and the hazard ratio is 0.63 for these patients. So around 47% uh, um, benefit in terms of overall survival for the patients. You can see that at one year, 88 versus uh, 81. So the summary of this trial, was this was the first randomized trial to evaluate the duration of therapy with PD-1 or PD-L1 inhibitors. Among the patients still on nivolumab after one year, progression-free survival was significantly improved for the patients who continuously treated versus stopping, hazard ratio 0.42, overall survival a benefit of around 47%, showing a trend favoring continuous nivolumab uh, follow-up for overall survival is still ongoing. The frequency of treatment-related adverse events was numerically higher with the continuous versus the one year, but overall there were few new onset events that occurred after one year. So in conclusion, we now have data for five-year overall survival in second line, but again, this is a phase one trial, but it definitely shows that we, th we are doing much better for our patients with the use of immunotherapy, even if we're using it in second line. I think clinicians will have to uh, stick and respect the results of each clinical uh, trial in, in, in setting. Continuous therapy with checkpoint inhibitors will add on in terms of overall survival, and immunotherapy is a promise that our patients are looking for forward to, but let's not forget that we have a long path to go before curing all our patients. And thank you very much for your attention. Do we have any questions since I'm both the chairman and speaker? Okay. Thank you very much.